Hi friends, I hope everyone is doing well. For today's collages, I'll be using some of the transparent ephemera created in the tutorial video that I uploaded last week. I'll link that video in the description area if you haven't watched it and want to take a look. I also made this new art journal. It came together pretty quickly since I kept the discarded book cover exposed. I added decorative duct tape details on the edges and the inside cover. It's slightly smaller than 6 inches by 8 inches and it has 140 pound cold press watercolor paper that was bound using a Coptic stitch. I added denim fabric to cover the spine as another decorative detail. I'm planning on using a lot of wet medium so I wanted to create on watercolor paper for a change. My other art journals are made with 60 to 80 pound drawing paper which has worked as well. I'll be talking about the supplies and other things during each collage section, so let's get started with the first collage. I have a rough idea how I want all the collages to look. All will be in the portrait orientation. For this collage, this is the image transfer that will be used as the focal point and starting point as well. I want to lean into the shape of the ephemera and the image on it. This ephemeral focal point fits nicely into the lower left area of the substrate. Both of these purple transparent ephemera were made on deli paper. I'm deciding which one will be a good visual element under the image transfer. I prefer the solid dots since it's a recognizable shape. I like that the solid dot paper is longer than the image transfer piece. It adds an interesting detail and it'll be read as a separate element. I will be applying the transfer ephemera with liquid matte medium and any painted or monoprinted papers with a glue stick. I find it helpful to apply the matte medium from the inside out or from one end to another. You want to try to avoid wrinkles as much as possible. I'm okay with some wrinkles. I do my best to avoid it, but it can happen. We are creating handmade art, so there'll be some imperfections. We need to embrace that. This pink swirl monoprinted paper will add a nice contrast to the image transfer and the solid dot ephemera. For a solid wash of color, I brought out Paper Artsy Midnight Acrylic Paint. Also, this color will bring in a dark value to the collage. I'm adding a guideline from the painted area from the edge of the dot ephemera to continue the slanted direction. I switched to a slightly smaller flat brush so it's easier to paint this area. This white transparent ephemera was made on deli paper. I do tend to gravitate to use deli papers for transparent ephemera. I think they are more transparent than tissue paper. I chose this section because I like how the bottom circle is slightly off the edge of the paper. Next, we need to figure out what to do with this area. I like this pink mono printed paper, so I want to use it again. I need to find a section that will work in this area. Cutting the edge in a slant works with the angle of the dark blue area. I'm double checking the image transfer to make sure it fits as is or if it needs to be trimmed. Then apply matte medium to the back side. Uh -huh. 
I like to smooth out image transfer ephemera with my thumb and fingers so I can feel if all the surfaces is adhering to the ground. I don't care for shiny surfaces, so I'm applying a thin layer of matte medium on top of the image transfer to dull the surface. Here's the final artwork. I'm happy with the way it turned out. I'll talk more about it during the art review section. Now on to the next collage. These are the ephemera I pulled. I may pull additional ones if needed. I'm starting with the image transfer ephemera. It needs to be cut down a bit to remove the section after the strike off where the image didn't adhere to the packing tape. I chose this orientation for the ephemera because I like the way the slight curve of the lines goes towards the center of the substrate. I like that this painted paper has a nice variation of color. It will add a nice detail under the image transfer ephemera. I'm lightly marking where the image transfer ephemera will be located so I know where to glue the painted paper which will be underneath. I want both pieces to be seen as one element. I'm waiting a bit before gluing the image transfer ephemera so I can work on the other areas of the collage. This purple ephemera was painted on a used tea bag paper. This red painted ephemera is on deli paper. I need to decide on the placement of these two elements. I like to trim off the areas of the ephemera where there isn't any paint or image transfer. It's not necessary to have this unmarked section. I want to finish the first layer of the collage, so that's why I'm moving on to this triangle stamped ephemera on used tea bag paper before gluing down the purple ephemera. I like that some of this ephemera will trail onto the purple painted paper. One row of the triangles will fit into the area where the image transfer ephemera ends. Now on to adding the second layer of the collage elements with gluing the image transfer first. Again, I'm adding a thin layer of matte medium on top of it to dull down the shine. Since the red painted paper is wider than this purple paper, I need to decide what section of the red paper will be exposed. Since the red side of the purple image is going off the paper, I want it to be flush against the right side of the substrate. It will seem like the image is continuing off the page. Adding a small amount of these white dots on deli paper will add a nice detail to this section of the collage. This red area looks a bit awkward to me, so I'm adding a sliver of this black line deli paper. I cut it so it just touches the tip of the red triangle paper. I don't want to cover up this section of the paper. I'm happy with the way this collage turned out as well. 
On to the next one. Another collage using image transfer ephemera. I typically don't use image transfers in my artwork, so I wanted to push myself to use these ephemera in this video. I'm trimming off the section of the image transfer that isn't needed. I want the image transfer to be the focal point and be placed off center. This placement is pleasing to my eye. I brought out altered bleeding tissue paper for this collage. I have a tutorial on this process. I'll link that video in the description area if you're interested in watching it. My plan for this green paper is to align it with the angled dark gray shadow on the image transfer. I also want the blue altered bleeding tissue paper to be placed at an angle. It will make the collage more cohesive looking. I'm adding a pencil mark as a guide to where to place the image transfer paper because I'm placing other ephemera first. A reminder that altered bleeding tissue paper will bleed when wet, so be mindful of this when using it for collaging. I brushed some of the green dye onto the substrate to cover this white area to add some color, just in case it's not covered by other collage ephemera later on. I trimmed the two bleeding tissue paper so I had a better visual of the edges of the substrate. This will help when collaging on top of it. My eye went directly to the right side of this ephemera. I like that it has a gray box, but adding some additional ephemera underneath it will enhance it. The black X's are too busy for me. The uneven black lines are a nice detail to give a visual element to the collage, and it's not too busy looking. Both of these ephemera are on deli papers. I switched to a small stiffer brush to make sure the paper melts into the surface. This white deli paper will add a nice contrast to the green bleeding tissue paper and the overall design of the collage. At this point, I'm not sure if I want to add anything to the blue bleeding tissue paper, so I want to glue the image transfer focal point to the collage. I really like the look of these small expressive circles on deli paper. It will add a good addition to the collage. I'm cutting around the circles to remove any unpainted paper. this collage marinate for a bit. I may add to it, but let's go on to the next collage in the meantime. Here are the transparent ephemera I pulled for this collage. No image transfers this time. I'm starting with this tissue paper with dark pink X's. The tissue paper was coated with matte medium before I painted the X's on it. My design idea is to place all the papers off center or at an angle. 
It helps me to draw the guidelines for the ephemera if I have a layout in mind. I'm not sure if you can see the guidelines, so let me bring the journal a bit closer. I'm starting by painting with Blix Matte Acrylic Paint and an Amethyst on the ground layer for two of the shapes. I'm using the angle brush to help me get the paint within the angled shapes. Next, I'm using Blake's Matte Acrylic Paint in Green Blue Light. And finally, I'm using Blake's Matte Acrylic Paint in Celadon. This isn't a color combination I've used before. I've mentioned in previous videos that I like working in an art journal or a sketchbook, so I feel more comfortable experimenting when collaging. Continuing with adding transparent papers, this is a used tea bag paper with a stamp image made with black ink. You have probably noticed that I fold papers into shapes to fit the space before cutting. This technique usually works well, but as you will see, I will also use a pencil to mark where I need to cut. Next, this is a deli paper with stenciled purple numbers on top. These are red painted marks on a used tea bag paper. I love the look of red on the light blue shape. It has a nice contrast. quick snip to remove excess paper so it won't be overlaid on the next painted shape. These are orange stripes on a deli paper. As you can see, I'm mixing up the patterns. To me, it's turning into a fun looking collage. I want to be a bit more exact with my cut, so I brought out a pencil to mark the cutting lines. And finally, a black grid pattern on deli paper.
here's the finished collage. Let's have a final review of all the collages in the next section. Overall, I'm happy with the way this collage turned out. I like the pink monoprinted paper. It adds a nice pop of color. The purple dots under the image transfer focal point works well. This area where the dark blue paint with the white circles is good, but I wish the transparent paper melted into the dark blue a bit more. I'm going to test out this combination again to see if it was the application of the matte medium or the transfer paper itself. This collage may be my favorite of the four. The design works well. The image transfer element looks good on top of this painted paper. I like the addition of the red triangle used teabag paper. I may have answered my question regarding the previous collage. Do you see this black striped deli paper melts into the red paint? The unpainted areas of the deli paper are mostly transparent. Now look at the expressive white dot deli paper. Do you see that over the purple image, the unmarked deli paper is more visible than the sections on top of the red paint? The transparency may have to do with the color of the paint that's glued to. Not positive, so I will need to do more testing to be sure. To be honest, this collage didn't turn out as well as I would have liked. The image transfer focal point doesn't stand out. I'm happy with the other areas. Instead of reworking this collage, I'm going to leave it as is. As I mentioned many times, this is why I like working in an art journal or sketchbook. It allows me to play. Creating this collage was an excellent exercise and learning experience, even though the collage isn't one of my favorites. This collage was fun to make. It was a bit outside my comfort zone, but I like that. I love playing with different color combinations and using different patterns together. Very happy with the way this collage turned out. I encourage you to play when making art. Even if the final artwork isn't exactly the way you had planned, you will have learned from the experience. I hope you enjoyed this video. I appreciate you taking time out of your day to watch it. Let me know if you have any questions. Take care.